Welcome to the Big Four Accounting Firms podcast brought to you by BigFourAccountingFirms.com. Now, in today's podcast, I wanted to just go over some more details about the ENY split up. Uh, some details came out about the timing, and this was also on the webcast from last week. But the timing or the planned execution of all of this, the breakup of ENY between the audit firm and then the consulting firm, which would be AssureCo and NuCo, is to complete it by the end of 2023. So there's a lot of time left for them to complete this. And based on the charts and stuff that we've seen, they're at the beginning stage of the process and they have basically five steps. And the first step is the global executive and top 15 country partner recommendations are made. The second step is the member firm information sessions. And these member firm information sessions would be obviously to educate the partners and every member firm about how it's, what's going to happen. Because you have to remember that a lot of the member firms have audit partners and consulting partners. So uh, there's going to be a lot of issues to deal with there, a lot of legal and regulatory things, because you have to remember that these are partnerships in various localities, and they're going to have to uh, figure out how to move the partners, the consulting partners out, and just retain the audit partners, because the audit partners, according to what we've seen, are going to retain the member firm structure that is currently in place. And so I'm guessing they would keep the ENY name and the consulting firm would, would uh, be the company that changes the name. And then the third step is the partner voting process. And this is where the partners would vote on whether to go forward with this. And I'm guessing if the payout is good enough, everybody's going to vote yes, or the majority of people will. The fourth step is the preparation for transaction execution. It's probably all the regulatory stuff um, that they have to do to proceed with this and the logistics that come with that, splitting up the intellectual property, et cetera, the, the people um, and, and all the issues that come along with that. And the final step is capital raise and NUCO separated. And that just means that NUCO would go public at that point. So there's still a lot of time to go here. We're heading towards the end of 2022. The planned execution of this is the end of 2023. So there's there's a lot of things to be considered here. I think if you're at ENY, um, you have to, there's a lot of options out there as to what to do. It's going to be a confusing few years, to say the least, uh, for you if you're working there. So, I mean, if you're looking to make a change in your career, basically any point in the next two years would would be a good time to do it. And you wouldn't have to have that much of an explanation as to why you're leaving. Not that people necessarily have to, but a lot of people tend to leave the big four early on in their careers and they don't need to do that. Uh, especially after one year, I think one year is too early to leave, but if you did want to do that, then it's, it's going to make more sense now because of the turnover that's happening at ENY as far as the company splitting up. And you can use that in saying you didn't want to be there for all the confusing transition. And another thing that the CEO brought up is, is that they are doing this because of conflicts with their, audit clients, especially in technology, because they can partner with them and form an alliance. And I think that is a key issue because all these tech companies, all these software companies are heavily capitalized and they use a lot of that capitalization for marketing, et cetera, and partnerships and joint ventures. And and the EY consulting arm is missing out on a lot of that. They can't use a lot of those and use a lot of those alliances with tech companies and and form form joint ventures with them necessarily because they they're their auditors and so this is going to 
raise a lot of opportunities. I think if you're an EY consulting, I think you would stay there. I think it's, if you're in a EY audit, then maybe you might look to leave. But either way, I, I think also staying at EY is a good choice because it's going to be an interesting, an interesting time uh, to go through. And there's potential for, like they said, significant pay raises. Who knows what they're going to do uh, as far as interim bonuses, retention bonuses to keep people around during this because it's obviously not going to be easy to raise capital if you have a lot of people jump ship, if your revenues go down, uh, if you lose a lot of your staff. So they're, a key part for both companies is to keep their people. So there's going to be a lot of games that are played here to get people to stay around. And and that is important for EY. And I, I feel like they need to to do a good job of that. They don't, they, it's going to be easy for the executives to lose sight because they work for the big four and, and just generally executives, of the big four are not good at retaining people. But as far as the success of this transaction, they need to make sure that they keep the people. Uh, I'm sure people will leave and they'll see that and they'll end up paying more. And I think according to one of these slides, that I've seen is that EY has over 350,000 employees at this point. And I think at this stage, they, they, they're probably over hiring, knowing that they're going to lose some people. So that's another consideration. But I think it's going to be a confusing time and people are going to leave and they're going to have to incentivize people to stay. And if you stay, you could make a decent amount of money. Who also knows what's going to happen once these firms split up and the pay, um, what the pay is going to be, especially for the public company, because um, working in a public company compensation, like bonuses are usually better than the big four. Uh, you get a lot more benefits typically in the industry. And we'll see. The, the only problem with that that I could see is it's legacy E&Y people. And so they might be say, hey, let's keep the old E&Y benefits in the way the compensation was structured. But if they choose to be more competitive, then that would be good for a lot of people. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunity here. Um, a lot of opportunity, they're gonna change the game. Um, but I think also that e &Y audit firm, like I said, will build out consulting. It'll become like another big accounting firm at some point. So there's just a lot of things to consider at this point. Um, it's going to be an interesting time for ENY to recruit too, uh, because how are you going to explain to recruits what's going on when the partners don't even know what's going on because they're at the initial stages? Uh, people are going to be a little bit concerned, but also people, there's millions of people that apply to ENY every year, so they're going to have plenty of candidates to choose from still, but it's just going to be a confusing time to join the firm. Uh, nothing can be assured to you Existing employees that have been there a long time are going to be confused as to their role, as to what's going on. And so it's going to be hard to incentivize people to join. I mean, other than that, they say that there's opportunity from the new transaction. But it's going to be interesting to see what's going on. It's going to be a year of this. So make sure to stay tuned and subscribe to this podcast and check out the show notes. Thanks for listening.